he planned to write a book of children's stories. Lenin was a fairly prolific writer of poetry and short stories. He even published three books in his own right, Spaniard in the Works, and Skywriting by Word of Mouth. The latter was published posthumously in 1986. In a number of interviews, Lenin said he always hoped to write a book of children's stories when he was old and retired. His love for Yoko Ono was incomparable. His prior relationships came and went without much fanfare, the most time he spent with his first wife, Cynthia, after marrying her was on a weekend, he dubbed Operation Cynthia, which was solely to convince her to try acid, but Ono was different. In describing their relationship he said, this is different from anything before. This is more than a hit record. It's more than gold. It's more than anything. The last photo of Lenin alive features his murderer. Lenin had just returned to music with the release of Double Fantasy in 1980. It was the morning of December 8 when Mark David Chapman asked Lenin for an autograph on the new record. Lennon obliged and amateur photographer Paul Gorsh was there to snap a picture. Hours later, Lennon would return from the studio and be shot several times outside his apartment by Chapman. He didn't like the sound of his own voice. Like many artists, Lennon disliked the sound of his own voice. Former Beatles manager George Martin told biographer Ray Coleman that Lennon had an intense dislike of his own voice, so much so that he asked to put effects on his vocals to make them sound different. Source, Ultimate Classic Rock The Beatles were inspired by the crickets. Lennon, McCartney and Harrison's first ever recording was a cover of Buddy Holly's That'll Be The Day in 1958. Buddy Holly's group name, The Crickets. Lennon would later joke that when he was 12 years old the man appeared on a flaming pie and said, from this day on you will be the Beatles. With an A. He wasn't content with a single Beatles record. One night, while dining with George Martin, former Beatles producer, years after the band had split up, he revealed to Martin that given the chance, he'd re-record every Beatles song. Shocked, Martin asked even Strawberry Fields, to which Lennon replied, especially Strawberry Fields. Source, Mental Floss. He was always an artist. As a boy, Lennon would ask for pencils, paint boxes, and paper in lieu of traditional gift. It wasn't long after that he began learning musical instruments, beginning with the harmonica given to him by a bus driver. He would go on to learn the banjo, guitar, mellotron keyboard, and many others. Bob Dylan introduced Lennon to Reed. Dylan proudly introduced John Lennon and the rest of the Beatles to Putt. Both Acid and Reefer were hugely influential to the band. In fact, Lennon referred to Rubber Soul as the Putt album and Revolver as the Acid album. Source, Flavor Wire. He was a firm believer in the paranormal. Lennon was such a believer in paranormal activity that he even kept a psychic on staff. He and Yoko Ono would consult the psychic on business deals. But how do you pay an on-staff psychic? Is there a union? They paid her a stipend on par with the staff lawyers and accountants. He was both dyslexic and legally blind. 
It's no secret that Lennon had bad eyesight. Those intense spectacles weren't just for show, but without his glasses, he was actually considered legally blind. He also slept with a light on because he didn't like the dark. Later in life, he learned that he was dyslexic. His last concert performance was during Elton John's set. Back in 1974, Elton John bet Lennon that if whatever gets you through the night a song on which they had collaborated hit one on the Billboard charts, Lennon would play it with him at Madison Square Garden. Well, it hit one and Lennon was a man of his word. But they didn't just play whatever gets you through the night. They also treated fans to Lucy in the sky with diamonds and I saw her standing there. It would be Lennon's last major concert appearance. He once saw a UFO. According to the Beatle himself, in August 1974, he saw a UFO from his terrace on 53rd Street in Manhattan, and even wandered out undressed to see it. He even summoned his secretary Mei Pang, who claims to have seen it too. There were a number of calls to the police that day from others in the neighborhood with similar sightings. Source, Fuse. His final resting place remains unknown. Lennon was cremated after his tragic murder on December 8, 1980. Fans have theorized that his ashes were spread at Strawberry Fields, is a section of Central Park that Lennon often visited and which was posthumously named for his famous Beatles song. However, this has never been confirmed or denied by Oh No, and the location of his ashes is still unknown. Source Fuse. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.